y'all stand and join me for the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the school board meeting for the school town of Speedway, October 11th, 2016. We're working from an agenda that's posted in the back of the room with seven items. We will start with item number one to approve the minutes from the regular meeting on September the 13th, 2016. Laura, I move that we approve last month's meeting minutes. Thank you, Laura. I'll second. Thank you, Tom. Or thank you, Terry. <laughs> Terry, <laughs> Terry. thank you. We, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes for September the 13th. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. 4-0, we will sign. minutes have been signed thank you item two report on fall semester 2016 average daily membership and uh, when I put this information in your folders we anticipated an average daily membership of 1802 students which was an increase of 84 students from the fall of last year uh, we actually cleaned up and picked up one more student so now we're reporting <coughs> 1803 so a net increase of 85 students this is the first time since the 90s that the school corporation has had 1,800 students. And to think that five years ago we were worried about going under 1,500. Wow. So people are coming. So uh, this uh, means uh, an increased estimate in our revenue for the coming year. Very good. Thank you for that report. Item three is to award a contract for Wheeler Elementary School addition. And bids have come in. We followed the bid process as prescribed, uh, advertised twice, had uh, all, all uh, bids come in from four contractors. You can see the summary of the four contractors. Uh, they were grouped within about 25% of each other, which is probably a little wider than we would have liked, but uh, that does give you an idea that wasn't, there wasn't some extremely low bid that would make you concerned. Uh, at this time, the low bidder is MatCon General Contractors at a base bid of $1,145,000. There are no alternates to that. It is the low bid by about $24,000 uh, over SCS construction. You can see Verlickler was a little higher than that, and Dahlman Contractors was the largest. Uh, these bids came in higher than expected. I think that the answer to that is pretty simple. The economy is picking up for contractors, but also our building materials list is somewhat unusual. People are no longer building with concrete block and epoxy. They're not building with ceramic tile. They're not putting in terrazzo. But that's what our buildings are. That was the standard, and we've chosen to continue that. Uh, Martin's here this evening. Uh, the general contractor said if you'd like to lessen some of the, the quality of the products that could possibly end up at some reductions, my indications were I don't think we were interested in that. Um, now, uh, Sterren Associates has used a standard model contract, and uh, it just came available to us on Monday morning. It is The actual contract is in the hands of Rob Shine of Krieg DeVault Legal for any small and slight revisions, but it is not in final form. So my recommendation would be that you uh, accept the general price of the project at $1,145,000 and authorize me, the superintendent, to enter into the contract once the contract has been fully reviewed and endorsed by your legal counsel. Martin's here if you have any questions. 
questions also, or if I can answer any. Do we have any questions? Mm -hmm. So do we need a motion? We need a motion. Well, to what's the board's pleasure on this? Mr. Smith? I'll move that we award the contract for Wheeler Elementary School Edition. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'll second. Thank you, Dr. Reed. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, the contract with Stair and Associates for Wheeler Elementary School. The contract actually is not with Stair and yeah, Associates. It's, it's with, it's, it's with Matt Construction Sorry, and, Matt and as revised and, and reviewed mm -hmm. by Lee Klaus. But we'll, we'll right. get all of that in the minutes correctly. But I'm sure I understood exactly what you As revised, what okay. Yeah. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries, 4-0. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have one quick question, just out of curiosity. Approximately, what was the difference of what it would cost had we put old-fashioned restrooms, for lack of a better term, in instead of, because uh, I know these have an area in the middle for washing, you know, they're constructed probably different than we have in the past. Contractor was um, very open with me, and I actually went over and looked at what his subs' numbers were. The masonry part of the contract was about a quarter of a million dollars, a little more than that. Um, frankly, the the uh, um, solid plastic partition sides, is, which is what we use anymore, those things are about four hundred dollars a piece. Um, so I'm going to have to just guess maybe five or six thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm just out of curiosity. I didn't. Yeah, I think what I think, and I is is that the partitions and how the restrooms are built are, are, are not adding a huge expense. Four or five. What's adding expense is the masonry block work with epoxy and what we're doing. Is that well? I think what. Two things that kind of came up is one is um, you use a there's a glazed brick used in the existing building in the corridors and in the toilet rooms. There's really only two people that make it anymore, um, and I think that added some cost. Um, and in order to get it quickly enough to move forward, I think that added some cost. Um, Twenty years ago. I mean, back when that building was built, there were probably a dozen people that made that product. Um, but it's a product that once you put it in, you never have to paint it, you never have to... You know, I think it's important to keep the... Yeah, keep the... What was there. It'll be consistent. And you won't have, you know, one way of cleaning one toilet room and then a different way of cleaning a different toilet room. But it won't be paint. <laughs> it, it could be if we wanted it to, but um, we're probably going to use something for one thing, that the pink is probably not available anymore. It's kind of oh shucks. <laughs> <laughs> but we could, if we wanted to pay a little more, we could get a custom. <laughs> well, I will just go with whatever we can. <laughs> so I, I think that I think that pushed up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So. Yeah. Okay. Martin, as always, thank you. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> we'll let the contractor know. Very good. You have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Item 4 is to present the security procedures regarding standardized testing. And these will look familiar to you, and so I will read them to you word for word because these are these procedures have only uh, changed slightly, if at all. But, it, but we do come every year to, to share with you what every teacher and every person in addition to a teacher reviews and signs off on regarding standardized testing. We take test security very seriously. We work diligently. The tests are distributed every morning. They are counted before in the morning when they go out. They're counted when they come back. Everyone will watch again a video and we will have a record that they've watched a test security video. We spent uh, 15 minutes of our last administrative meeting last week discussing these exact things and the need. I find the attitude of the administration and the teachers to just be exceptional. This, there, there's never any balking that people take it seriously. They, they, every year, even though probably know this as well as anything, 
continue to work diligently. And so we wanted to just share with you what we do in terms of all manners of standardized testing so that we hopefully do not have an error. Uh, but make no mistake, we, we have these kind of discussions beyond this. It would be a violation if teachers would find a test problem that said 2 plus 2 is 5. And later that day in the lunchroom, they said, did you see that problem that said 2 plus 2 is 5? That, that would be a test security violation. Or saying something, heaven forbid, on social media. We, we work diligently not to have that error because of the embarrassment that would come to the person. Now, when you have nearly 200 people who could make a mistake, there's always a potential for a mistake. And you know, we've even talked through, because it's so important here, what do we do if we have inclement weather? And where, you know, where do we go and what do we do with the testing and how do we do that? And how it's almost unfair that we're, we're stuck with, we've had a tornado warning, now do we stop testing and move students in the hallways or do we risk it? And uh, We don't, we, we stop, but uh, just tremendously. So we wanted to share with you, what, there's no action required, uh, but I do want you to realize what a person signs off, us and, off on and says that what they do on the last page. It doesn't involve their firstborn child, but everything but. Do, um, how much of it is pencil and paper, and how much is computer? Uh, there, it's. It, I would say I'll say it's split 50-50. Early testing is pencil and paper. Late testing, multiple choice, anything that is very suits itself to the computer is computer oriented. But short answer, response, the I read tests are paper and pencil, so we do both. Yeah, you know, it seemed to me that they were every they were going to be entirely computer based. I don't know if they. Well, we don't know what testing is going to be. Yeah, that's true. We we don't know. I mean, we we hear that. I think the only way it's ever going to be shorter is if it doesn't come back to more multiple choice and computer based. But we just don't know. Thank you. Any other discussion? We'll move to item five, acknowledgement of grants received. And I'd recommend that the board accept by consensus $145,765.06 of grants and donations to the school corporation. I think we should do that. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you all. Item six would be recognition of visitors and other business. I, I do have one item. Okay. Uh, because you have it in your, mm -hmm. we had one late resignation and you we always ask you to approve and I believe it was in your so I, of this whole thing on page one the bottom section is choral drama and band and if you go down to the one two three four fifth item the drama ass, assistant was Casey Ross and Casey is, uh, had to submit the resignation not able to help so it's an open position so I simply ask you to approve the ECA list as presented, but it would take a motion in action. Okay, we have a motion. I move that we approve the ECA list as presented. Thank you, Laura. Okay, well, Thank you, I'll Terry. Second. I'm Mr. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve, to approve the ECA listing as presented. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries, 4-0. we have any other? Uh, no other business. business items, but one of the things you have in your packet today is a, a Gleaner Food Bank note. And if you open it up <clears throat> to the third page on the bottom, you see Marathon Petroleum right here on Speedway and Fisher Kids. Oh, good. And they, you know, their kids are getting back sacks because of Mar Marathon was picked as the outstanding business last year by the Chamber <coughs> of Commerce for all the donations they've made. They continue and just an absolute wonderful thing and a little great publicity for the school. I commend, uh, uh, to be quite honest about that, that was Principal Betsy Snap. In her Good. first year working, she brought that to us and it was great. That's all I got for you. Yeah. We will sign claims. 